Good evening. This is the Facilities, Usage, and Planning Subcommittee meeting held tonight at the George M. Rom Little Theater, Brockton High School, 470 Forest Ave, Brockton, Mass., 02301. It's Tuesday, January 16, 2024, at 6 p.m. In addition to attending, the public can view this meeting via television on Comcast, Channel 8, in the 1071 HD version, and online via this link www.youtube.com slash the Brockton channels. The agenda is as follows. We have four items on the agenda. One is call a meeting to order. Two, the Huntington School. Three, other business. Four, the adjournment. It, the same as last week, Dr. Cobbs, we want to end this at uh, 645 so we can get on yes. to the other one. Yes, that would be helpful. 645 will end the meeting. It, it may be sooner, actually. The floor is yours, Dr. Cobbs. Good evening. Good evening, school committee members. Roll call. Oh. Sorry. Mr. Mayor? Here. Judy Sullivan? Yeah. Kathy Ellis? Here. Anna Oliver? Here. Tony Rodriguez? Here. Joyce Azak? Here. Tim Sullivan is here. We have a quorum. Claudio's on Zoom. Claudio. Here. Claudia, can you hear us? Yes. We are 100% with the quorum. Thank you. The floor is yours, Dr. Cobbs. Okay, let's try this again. Good evening, school committee members. Good evening, Mayor. Um, so I, I had a conversation this, this morning with uh, Vice Chair Kathy Ehlers, and, and uh, we were going over the agenda for this afternoon. And Actually, last week, uh, Deputy Wolder came to my office, and we we started thinking about the Huntington. I know this this meeting is pretty much dedicated to the Huntington, but we started to kind of brainstorm a little bit about the Huntington and realize that the Huntington, unto itself, is not a not a move by itself. It's going to affect literally the whole district, and it's going to affect moving the students that are currently at the Westgate. Um, so. Since then, you know, over the weekend, uh, Dr. Spalding and, and Karen Spalding and Karen um, Karen Spalding and myself and Sharon have kind of been working on a document that all of you got a copy of this morning from Vice Chair Ehlers. Um, we have done some updates to it, which Sharon is passing around for you. Um, so, as you can see, this move in this discussion about the the Huntington Building and the pre K concept itself needs a lot more work and because again it will affect a lot of students in the district and and it will affect uh, some financial considerations as well so again this document you can see it's in the draft and it's not for public consumption yet um, it's for your consumption to to perhaps um, comment on but I would ask you you know instead of having a, a full discussion about this to Huntington and make it a, take a vote tonight I would ask for you to postpone the vote, certainly open a public discussion about your thoughts and concerns about it, but actually schedule another subcommittee meeting of the whole for the, just to discuss this meet, you know, this, this proposal in a draft, and that subcommittee will take, as a regular school committee time does, from seven o'clock until nine, or 10, whatever, two or three hours, because it really, it really needs more in-depth discussion, and, and you all need much more time to digest all this information. And at the cabinet we met today, that's why you have an update to the draft that Sharon just gave you. Um, we, we met at the cabinet, and we will continue to do so and, and brainstorm and, and actually put together a team to, to kind of flesh this out and really have a comprehensive plan for the Huntington, the pre-K students, the, hunting, the therapeutic students that are at the Westgate Mall right now. So it's a comprehensive move, and, and it's much more to consider. So. I would ask certainly open it for discussion tonight and, and keep the discussion general more or less um, because we're not, a lot of this again is not ready for public consumption, but I would ask that you postpone taking a vote one way or the other tonight. With that, I'll open it for questions. <laughs> uh, I don't have any questions just yet. I have no okay. questions. Anybody have any questions, <laughs> Kathy? Mrs. Ehlers. Just one quick question. Um, 
Thank you very much for this outline, both you and Ms. Walder appreciate it because it kind of gives us a, a synopsis of everything that's happening right now. It's, a, it's a team effort. The, 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 you know, I just have to say, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, please. I just have to say, you know, the cabinet as a team, we really work hard. We, we, we keep expanding our meeting. We bring people in to ask questions, to gather information. A meeting like today lasts from about 2.30 until 5, and that's typical. But we go through a lot of consideration. There's a lot of brain power, a lot of experience, a lot of talent and expertise. So it's a team effort so with, the, with the cabinet. And I appreciate that. And like I told you earlier today when we were talking, like one of the things that we're dedicated to so making sure we do this time around that we haven't before is figuring out truly sustainable options. So this isn't just a Band-Aid. It's not, you know, right. 18 months from now, we don't want to be saying, by the way, we're going to be moving everybody out of the Huntington and now they're going to go here. Right. Finding solid solutions that we can, you know, afford and mm -hmm. basically make sense for the students. One thing that I did want to put out there is if we move the therapeutic day, just throwing this out there mm -hmm. to the Westgate, we have to go back to the city council to get approval for that RFP because the RFP we have right now only exists for one year. So we're right. gonna have to, okay, so I just wanna be clear right. that if we're going to use Westgate again for another year, we have to go back to the city council to, That's ask, a good for, point. Yeah. Yeah, to ask permission for that. Mm -hmm. So in all of this reorg, I just want to consider that if there's any possible way that we could eliminate some of that cost, yes, that would be great. And you can see in this proposal, it will, we'll flesh it out more, but that is part of what we're working on to, to reduce some of the costs here. Perhaps stay another one, one more school year, but, but, you know, but move to Huntington uh, Therapeutic School and reduce the cost, reduce our footprint there. Dr. Fultz? Yes, sir. I'll go first and then you, Judy. I see that we, the school committee voted on this 6 to 2 on July 11th. That's correct. To move one year to Westgate Mall? Right. And then fix the school and move back? Right. So, that was the vote, and that's what you need to reconsider. That's why we need more time. I think, I think all of us need more time to really consider the moves and, and what the impact will be for the district. But, but yes, that was a vote taken on July 11th for 62 to move the Huntington School to Westgate Mall for one year and then move them back to that building. Correct. Right. So what are you saying now? That's not going to happen? Well, that's what we, I want, want us to reconsider and think about what that move would mean. And, and, and I, I stand by it's not the best building for, the, for that particular population. It, it, and the idea is that if you read the whole minutes of that meeting was to open up more, take down some walls and open them up more sight lines because the this, this school was designed for, for elementary and young students. It had a lot of nooks and crannies and those students are typically escorted to class with their teachers back and forth. Um, Ken Thompson will tell you we had many calls from Jay Lander when he was the principal there about trying to close off exits and doors in different places in the building, which of course you cannot do because it's, a, it's an egress and it's a fire hazard. So. It is not the building that's best suited for that student population. So, yes, I, and I'm going to ask you to reconsider that vote and vote differently. And when we flesh out the proposal, we have time to discuss it more. <clears throat> Would have to reconsider that vote and vote again. That's correct. Okay. I know this is just a rough draft, but do, do you have any idea what this is going to cost? Um, I, I don't want to say right now because there's a lot of cost to consider, but you know, it, in, in, in the end result, as we discussed last time, you know, there is a significant savings due to the, the transportation costs. You know, we, again, we estimate one and a half to two million, perhaps more savings, so it, it could essentially pay for itself. And we reduce some of those costs that you saw last time that we proposed, like the food service person and the principal, those positions will not necessarily need to be because we're looking at ways to move populations around and move the, stoop, the you know the um, teachers and the administration with them. All right, so I'll have to wait and see for the full. Yes, we'll we'll get you a, a more detailed proposal when we when we go to the next full. Again, I'm requesting a full subcommittee meeting that that's you know at probably at least three hours. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sullivan. <coughs> Um, Dr. Cobb, just um, to bring the new members up to date and also everyone up to date on this, on the Huntington School Project, um, it did say um, in the notes that um, from July 11th, okay, mm -hmm. Dr. Cobbs and the facilities team will look at opening space and making office space for the special ed department. 
to be located within the Huntington School mm -hmm. before students return. Dr. Labalos will present a plan in August that will explain what it will look like as we bring our students back from out of place district placement as many were placed outside on a 45 day avail. Mm -hmm. That could cost up to 30,000. It would be done in house and that would help bring the cost of outside placement down because we have many students on outside placement so we were trying to bring them back mm -hmm. to save money on costs for outside placement. The other thing was, Dr. Cobbs is right, um, it is, was being renovated for open floor plan, right? and welcoming environment, which is what you just mentioned. Right. So thank you. And also, um, we have approximately 30 students and hope to bring 15 to 20 students back into the district before the school year begins to grow this population to 50 students, mm -hmm. which we have plenty of space and a couple of rooms for the 45 day of values because we need to think of our special ed kids, which we were trying to get more accommodations mm -hmm. for and right. bring back out of district kids because now we would be able to accommodate them in this building when we did renovations. Um, so the Huntington School was our therapeutic day school before this was shut down for one year to go to the Westgate. Mm -hmm. Also the Barrett Russell used to be our, um, our school for kids that needed another setting. And um, the pre our preschool, which is our special ed and with preschool, because we have to educate those kids at three years old. We have to educate them We're a public school. So then um, at that time, the, they were housed at the Howard School, which is now closed down on the um, mm -hmm. north side of Brockton. And, and I was here on the committee is why I want everyone updated because not everybody was here. Mm -hmm. So that building was deemed that it wasn't passing state regulations, I believe. Right. You were, you know, you were involved in that, I think, but you weren't facilities mm -hmm. person yet. But I think you were still the principal mm -hmm. at Edison Day, Edison Academy. Right. So then um, they moved to the Gilmore and before that, the Gilmore had had some sort of roof collapse in the calf. I mean, mm -hmm. Tell me if I'm wrong on any of this. I'm just remembering all this. Yeah, I wasn't around when that, that happened, actually. Yeah, okay. yeah. so Gilmore had some sort of roof collapse mm -hmm. in, the, in the calf, so it had to be closed down. Those kids were moved to the Huntington. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was in the Huntington before they were moved. I can't remember that, but I know that some educators will remember. So um, there was a big thing on the Barrett and the Gilmore probably about six years ago okay. that we renovated the Barrett for a mm -hmm. preschool because right. we had to get them out of the Gilmore because Gilmore was built as an elementary school, not as a preschool center. Right. It was built through the state as an elementary school. Mm -hmm. and it's functioning today as an elementary school. So that's why there was so much moving, but Barrett was completely renovated as a preschool mm -hmm. probably about six years ago when that happened, when they moved out of the Gilmore over to the Barrett and then the Huntington kids moved into a, a school that would properly prepare them to be educated with a full gym and a full calf. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm sorry, is there a question? <laughs> no, I was just updating okay. everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So just to respond to that, Julie, actually, that uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And all those things that you said are things that we're incorporating into this new proposal that will take into account the out of district, the 45 day you know, assessments, the, uh, you know, in all housing in, in one area, in one, one, one building. Um, so those things will be taken in consideration, you know, with, again, the, the potential savings of, of transportation costs and, and, and allowing for a full pre-K model that we're, we're trying to encompass that we, as you, you, as you pointed out in the July 11th minutes, um, it just mentioned something, do something with pre-K or for pre-K, but it never, there was never a proposal, never any, anything put forward for it. So again, with the team, we were really, actually we're really excited about the concept and we're, we're working through more detailed and more cost analysis that we'll have prepared for the, for the meeting when we do the full three hour meeting. Right, and definitely, 
that email that you sent us today that the state was going to fully fund us for preschool by the end of 2000 or beginning of 2026. 25, yeah. 26, I think, yeah, yeah. I think it said 26. 26, yeah. So that there, right there is, you know, when we're fully funded by the state, I mean, right now we have to. When? We have to, yeah. And we have to educate this, the special needs kids at three years old. Absolutely. They have to be mm -hmm. having their services and they have to be yeah. educated with this and receiving their services. It's a state law. And also, that doesn't exclude, exclude regular ed kids. Mm -hmm. Regular ed kids can sign up as role models in that pro mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. for a full day. And we also have um, Dr. Julie Andre working on um, partnerships with Brockton Day Nursery. There's plenty of opportunity mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. parents out there with kids that need programs. This is through a grant, though. The CPPI grant that Julie, mm -hmm. Julie and Andre is working on, and I've been in on their meetings for over a year now. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a group of that we're servicing over at the Brockton Day Nursery, right. and with mm -hmm. yeah. what's the other one? Um, the t not title one. Oh, I forget the name of it now. <laughs> I, I'm aware of the Brockton. It's Day the nursery. kids yep, that are yep, low-income yep. kids that are. Yep. Head Start. Head, Head Start. Start, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. And they have that at Brockton Day Nursery as well, Head Start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Head Start Kids. So, mm -hmm. we, so parents can still sign up mm -hmm. for programs. They're not being excluded with any kind of preschool. Yeah, and, and that, again, that's the, and, the idea, the concept is to be able to service more of the students, certainly service the ones yes, that you know, Dr. Lavoie can speak when, to, but the students we have to service yep. are the special needs students. Uh, oh, but yeah. you're right, we want to encompass more of the general education population, as, as much as we can anyway. Uh, right, but we're already doing SPED, and we have been for years. Right, yeah. exactly. And the role models are also in on it, but now we have the luxury of that CPPI mm -hmm. grant mm -hmm. in three years, I think, and we should have her come present because she should tell all the new members and everyone else. She's been trying to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judy. Sorry. There's just been other things that have come up on the agenda that we have to deal with first. Yeah, there's that a would lot. be a good idea if you could get her on the agenda to mm -hmm. present to the other members. Thank you very much for all you've done so You're far. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Judy. Cubs, and we're all willing to work together. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's a team effort between the cabinet, the all these, this, and the and this this body here. So we really need to work together to service the students. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, had a uh, question. Good, good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, Dr. Cobbs, and your team uh, for this updated version. Um, and I I agree with you. We need to do a further uh, drill down on not just initial upfront expenses. Right. Uh, cost savings, absolutely, but also reoccurring expenses. The fact that the Huntington is being considered, that the Barrett Russell, Robert C. Jones, um, you know, I also think the Goddard should be thrown into the mix absolutely. as well. That, that's going to be in the next iteration. When we, when it'll be incorporated into the meeting when we when we have that three hour meeting. That because if that, we can that. sever ties on certain leases for cost savings, I, I'll give you an example. Um, right now, the initial proposition would be to have the Westgate building used for IT. Mm -hmm. However, IT here in the core building of Brockton High is going to be relocating to the new public safety building. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, that's summer of 25, but the IT that's already in this building is leaving, right? Mm -hmm. And then the school, there's, there's, there's mechanisms I think that we can consider that right. might be cost savings, but also not reinventing the wheel um, for locations. If we can use our city assets, school assets, it's going to be, it's going to be a much better endeavor. Um, and I think all of us, um, you know, learn a lesson with transportation, right? With the first republic, uh, you know, first student, and then cost savings. But there needs to be a, an accurate plan in place going forward. So I, I want to thank you. I also concur with you. Like, this is going to be a lengthy conversation, and it should be. I also asked Mr. Clarkson to be here tonight. I know you and he have been working, and I know, I know uh, Ms. Walder was on the call as well with Mr. Plant, who we'll hear from later today. But at the end of the day, you know, we need to come up with a plan that's a cost savings but also helps services the children that we need to service. So Absolutely. I just want to in, in a comprehensive move. So yep. it, it's not move every summer. It's not, okay, now we'll do this, now we'll nope. do that. This will be a more. One and done type of thing. Exactly. Yep. It, it, to last for a while and hopefully to accommodate more students coming in. So Thank absolutely. you. Thank you. Ms. Tellers. 
I just, um, I'm gonna follow up on what um, the mayor just said in, that, in this meeting, because it's a working meeting, can we have Ms. Walder, can we have Dr. Lalibois, can we have you know, the stakeholders that are gonna be involved in the move so that, we, so that we're all kind of speaking the same language, and then that way it can truly be a working like session for us mm -hmm. and so that any one of us can say when we leave this meeting we know who's going to be at the Huntington we know who's going to be at the promise we know who's going to be here and there's and to the mayor's point that there is when we leave the meeting there's a plan right. and a timeline on that plan exactly. so that we can all be watching it and saying are is this happening time to execute <laughs> exactly yeah, exactly mm -hmm. I just wanted to point that out thank you mm -hmm. um, do anybody want to check with Claudio to see if he has a question Claudio do you have any questions not the moment, thank you. Okay. Ms. Azak. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Cobbs. So I brought this up during our um, facilities meeting, I believe back in July, mm -hmm. and I just saw it on here. Um, and I did get some emails um, saying about adjusting the toilet seats and the sinks to accommodate um, mm -hmm. the younger students. But I see here we really didn't do the renovations that long ago at the Barrett Russell, and here we are, we have to make those changes now to accommodate the older students. If we can look into what we had discussed back in July, try to- Repurpose. <laughs> make them, mm -hmm. or, or make, make them work in the situation. I'm not saying every single mm -hmm. bathroom or sink, but again, we, we seem to move buildings around every few years and we want to grow we want to grow these programs and it's wonderful it's great we've talked about this for a few years um it's wonderful but just the cost now to have to go back to the barrett russell and these are these are old buildings mm -hmm. they're great they're probably built better than some of the new buildings we have mm -hmm. but now we have to do renovations again to the barrett russell so to accommodate the older students so if we can i, I know i know i got some emails with some pushback so I say let's look to our, our teachers in, in that department and let them give us their recommendation. I mean, they're with the students. This is what they need. Let them come to us and say, it, mm -hmm. we think this will work, or no, this is gonna make my life really, really complicated during the day um, if I don't have the tools I need as far as just you know the setting is with our students. Um, but I, I did notice that, and that was one of my questions is, the Huntington's a very old building, and once we start working on the plumbing mm -hmm. and things like that, I just don't want to run into a lot of issues when we're working on, a, on an old, it's a beautiful building, but it's an older building. It is, it's, it's 60, 68 years old, what do you figure out today? More than that. 65 years old. It was Isn't built it over in, 100? No, the, the Huntington, you're right, the Huntington, no, the Huntington over 100 years old. <laughs> well think, over 100. <laughs> the other school, the, you're um, right. It's, yeah, it is over 100 years old, you're right. So, and that, that was, so I know I, I've gone there a few times, and I know IT's down there. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to take time to renovate and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Couldn't they just stay there till things are completed? As far as the Huntington. Um, well, we'll, we'll discuss then? that. We'll discuss that at the, the next meeting when we have a lengthy discussion about how that what that will look like. But um, first of all, to address the Huntington, that's going to have to be remodeled anyway, not remodeled, but just renovated. You know, again, carpets and and paint and ceiling tiles, light fixtures. So that has to be done anyway. What the Huntington needs that any other building doesn't is more bathrooms. And whatever the student population is still, you know, mm -hmm. if we're going to use the whole building, we need more bathrooms. Um, whatever the the tall toilets or the smaller toilets. Um, as far as the the Barrett Russell building, we really won't have to do much there other than change the toilets because we're not doing any other renovations, any other changes, and we can repurpose those toilets if we're going to use them in a different building. So, um, and and we we're going to replace the toilets at the Huntington anyway, so we we'll, we'll be put the new ones in a, in, in a new building. Okay. So it, it minimizes the expenses. Again, Huntington expenses are what they are. And I'll have a detailed you know, breakout on that in the next meeting, but we have to do it anyway. Whatever population we put there, we're going to have to do that renovations. And that was what we talked about over the years when we had the roof replaced. We finally got that done by the MSBA. Now, no sense in doing that work and having a roof leak and ruin the work. So well, now we can. It. Yeah, so. no, definitely with the, um, with the roof replacement, we, mm -hmm. we do need to get something at the Huntington, we can't, right. it's, it's not vacant, but it's a handful of IT 
employees you know, currently it, there. It's a good building. It's a solid building. You're right. It's old, but it, you know, it's, it has something that a lot. Some of our buildings don't, which is an elevator, which is key. I mean, so we can, you know, we can have access to the to a upper lower, lower floor. So that's huge. Uh, has a lot of space. Very large classroom. So it, you know, it, it it can be again renovated, not remodeled. Renovated. We're not opening new walls or anything else like that. Major construction. The major construction items will be the bathrooms for the most part. Okay, and a percentage of the construction? Because I know once we get to a certain percentage, we're required to update. Right, and, know, we, and we were just under that. Things we, like that. So when we get to a certain percentage of renovations, we will be yeah. under that, so we're not required to. Yeah, we'll, we'll be under that, because we, we, that was a consideration when we, when we had to do the roof, and the roof was $1.7 million, so the, this renovation won't be nearly that, that cost, so we'll still stay under that threshold. Okay, and my second question is, is I know we ran into this, and I know... Um, Two of the members were on the committee with my with me um, at the time when we were making all the movements from the Gilmore to the the Huntington, the Gilmore, the Gilmore to the Barrett. Um, mm -hmm. So the Barrett. Last time I was there, they were using that one room as a cafeteria slash gym. really a yeah. gym. Yeah, for the play play area for the younger students, right? So mm -hmm. would that would that work for the ter therapeutic students, or well, do they need two separate locations? That's two actually separate. more the space than what they have right now at the, at the Westgate because they have one room, that, a large room that they they set up some some gym workout equipment in. So they will have similar space, if not more. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Ms. Sullivan. I just wanted to make a comment um, that the Barrett Russell. Um, when that was renovated, it was the people that moved there were the teachers and everybody really grew to love the building, and we made we spent a lot of money on the changes, and um, we could look it up. We you know we could look back on how much was spent on renovating the Barrett for a preschool, mm -hmm. um, but they they really love it there. They, there was a lot of controversy at the time mm -hmm. about them going there, but once they got there, mm -hmm. they love the building, and we we spent a lot of money to renovate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Ellis. Um, Dr. Cobbs, just in light of what our schedule is, I was looking at the fact that we have a February 6th regular school committee meeting and we have February 20th. Do you want to try to put this on the 13th? Or would you be ready? I want to give you and your team enough time to put together a presentation for us. February 13th? Yeah, that, that should be fine because we get the regular school committee meeting is on the 5th, I believe. So the, the yeah, following the Tuesday, 6th, the 13th, yeah, I'm trying to be to fine. do the in between meetings. Yeah, that, that I, works. But I want to make sure I give you and your team enough time to put together a plan that actually yeah, makes that, sense. That should work for us. Yeah. I think the sooner the better we could. We may have another meeting after that, you know, yep. before we make, take a vote and decide. Okay. Dr. Cobbs, I just wanted to say that. Uh, there was a special swing at the Gilmore School that a custodian bought for the school. Mm -hmm. It had to be moved. It cost a fortune to move it. I, I, I went down and looked at it, and I said, wow. But that swing is still there. I said the Barrett Russell was moved from the Gilmore to the Barrett Russell. Mm -hmm. And it, from what I understand, it cost over $100,000. He paid for it himself. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. It, what, what would happen with that swing? Would we'll relocate it if we have to move it. We'll move it again. Uh, you know, this these moves when we again when we when we cost everything out and, and give you the full proposal, um, we will have the cost of moving and and it, it, because of the the scope of the moves again, we'll probably we will not probably we'll have to engage a, a contractor and we, we actually do have a moving company on contract you know on a three year con service contract. Okay. Just so you know, that swing will not be forgotten down there? No, of course, it will, it's in use. We'll have to use it for the population again. Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Um, trying to eliminate the cost. Have we looked at the options of actually using um, Southeastern? Because I know they have a program where they actually go out in the community and help build and rebuild structures. Is there, is there a possibility to look into that to see if we can get those students in? Because mm -hmm. we do have, you know, what, 70% of this population of Southeastern students from Brockton, mm -hmm. if we can absorb some cost that way as well. And then also, um, might seem kind of far-fetched, but also Plymouth County, um, with the Sheriff's Department, yep. they do have uh, work crews that come out into the community to do services, so I think we need to look at every option to save every dime. Certainly. Just point of information through you, Mr. Chair. 
Yes. Um, what Mr. Rodriguez says is 100% accurate. We have 65% of the kids from Brockton go to Southeast, and they're actually, right now, uh, it's been approved by their school committee. They're going to be building a welcoming center at uh, DW uh, Fields Park. So uh, I think, I, I, I don't think, I will reach out to the superintendent. I don't know, I know they have two projects going on, this one and another one, another municipality, but I, I think that's a brilliant idea. And can we reach out to Sheriff uh, as well, McDonald? Okay. Any other questions for the Huntington School? Uh, actually, I just have some information. Uh, uh, Julie, the Barrett Russell rebuild happened from the 2012 2013 school year. 2012 It was completed for the 2013 school year, 12 13 school year. For which one? No. The Barrett, that, the, 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 that was already on the committee. It was after 2016. I was on the committee. Okay, so well, that's. That was the first renovation, Dr. Cobbs, for the kids the to go over there. That's the rebuild in 2012 that was a 2013. Different renovation. Mm -hmm. Okay. That wasn't the preschool one. Yeah. Uh, that was just a general renovation. It, that school was closed for a while. Yeah, it, it had was. to be re yes. remodeled. Open it up, right? Yep, that's correct. Thank you. All right. I have three facilities questions sure. unrelated to the Huntington School. Okay. Are you ready for those? Sure. <laughs> that's why we're here. We only have 10 minutes left. But anyway, the, uh, I was at the Thanksgiving Day football game in Bridgewater, and I ran into George Willett, and he said to me, as I was leaving, and he said to me, what's going on? I haven't been paid rent for Foster Street. Mm -hmm. and he said, I don't know. Then I heard today that the Foster Street rent hasn't been paid in the last six months. I don't know if that's true or not. Mm -hmm. The other question is that, well, it's a statement that no vendors will supply parts to Brockton Public Schools anymore. I don't know if that's true or not. And the other statement is uh, the generator company in Canton is closely watching Bro Brockton Public Schools. They don't want to. They don't want to put any money into Brockton Public Schools. They're afraid they're not going to get paid. What's going on? The bills aren't getting paid anymore. Well, um, those aren't so much facilities questions as they are financial questions, and certainly Troy and TJ, when they address the in, in the next meeting, will will address those in more detail. But um, there are some problems here. Well, the point I'm trying to make is you're trying to add more problems with this Huntington. I'm quickly figuring like a million dollars. You, you can save a million on the schools, but it's still going to cost a million dollars to put everything together. Well, we'll, we'll be using our in-house assets for the, for the larger portion of the work over there. So, again, <coughs> we, we may need to look at you know, contracting out, at least getting bids for the plumbing work, depending on what, when we get the engineering costs secured for that. Okay. I don't know, should that have been brought to Tory Clarkson instead of you? About the rent being paid. Right, because it is, it, it's a, there's, there's, it's, it's kind of complicated and it, and it, you know, there's between the, the solicitor's office and the, and the financial services office over at, the, at City Hall, that's kind of where the issues are. So I can't elaborate on those right now, but you know, there, there's problems. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion has been made and properly second. All in favor by a show of hands. Oh, we got to. Oh, you got to do a roll call because of Zoom. Oh, roll call. Claudio? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Ellis? Yes. Ms. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. And Tim Sullivan is a yes as well. Meeting adjourned.